Welcome to eLoot.gg, the number one place to earn cash by watching videos and taking surveys. Withdraw your earned points to cryptocurrency, PayPal, or Steam wallet codes. eLoot.gg. I've been wanting and needed to make this video for a long time now. I've just been trying to search for all the right information. For all of you guys who clicked on the video to learn about VGO, you certainly will. And I want to tell you guys as well, I've gotten all the information from both sides. And I want to give you guys my honest opinion throughout the entire episode, as well as go into full detail as exactly what VGO is, their marketing tactics so far, and of course, all of their three cases at the point of me recording this, how those are going, and some of the issues that I have currently with VGO and maybe in the future as well. And I want to try though to give you guys both sides of the coin, of course, the bad as well as the good, and then about by the end of it, give you guys an overall opinion on why exactly I will not be going forward with VGO, but other people certainly will, and it does seem to have a prolonged future. So huge shouts to Joe. He's actually the owner of Loot VGO. So he was the owner of one of those VGO websites out there. If you guys are not aware, VGO actually gave their API access keys to anyone out there, so it's public use. So anyone who wants to run their own websites can actually use uh, their APIs, and of course, they were one of them, and they reached out to me to give me the full details about this. So it's not a sponsorship. I just wanted you guys to know the owners of an actual VGO website are the reason why I made this video to give you guys the full details. So first of all, we also finally know what VGO stands for, and that is Virtual Global Operation. That was a, a long time running. We had no idea what VGO really stood for, so it is Virtual Global opera Operation. And on top of that, I did actually kind of ask these owners exact questions as to some big problems everyone's had so far with VGO. So basic background details as well. We were all correct. It was kind of a, a, an easy assumption to make. It actually is run by OP Skins. Now, I, I do kind of want to say I I've had several issues with the sketchy marketing tactics in terms of response from the team over there uh, and also in terms of OP skins not really coming forward and just saying they own it. It's really no big deal because of course VGO being run by OP skins, a pretty legitimate company, especially they used to be, you know, of course the biggest global marketplace for CSGO. It's a pretty big backing for them to have and they are, I can confirm, they are the actual owners and runners of VGO itself. Now on top of that, I do want to talk about the cases. Apparently these cases are run a bit differently than CSGO cases and the times that they actually limit themselves from how many times they can be open. Each and every case can only be open 1 million times. As of me recording this, they have three cases out there, and in total, I believe the website shows around 350,000 cases, but in total, I believe the actual number is closer to 600,000 cases open. So right away, you can see it's not a drastic amount, and it's not the millions and millions of cases that, that CSGO has been open, but in such a short amount of time, they definitely have acquired quite a few case openings, and I do have to say, we'll talk about it later on, the exact statistics of these case openings. It's definitely a better tactic than ever opening CSGO cases, which was was pretty shocking to find out. So a pretty unique thing VGO offers the community is of course you probably have seen tons of retweets out there, designers actually reaching out and tons of YouTubers submitting their skins, Anomaly even being one of their bigger sponsors out there, sending in skins and of course VGO paying them sums of money, usually I think it was a thousand dollars was a stereotypical amount up till now and it's been a great response because VGO is kind of treating these cases a bit like artwork. They, of course just like CSGO skin creators are part of the community, same here, you submit your skins and of course those skins can only go into, into the cases and once they're open a million times, those cases, those skins will no longer be repeated. So it is kind of cool in that way. And of course, these skins have unlimited design reaches because of the great way they marketed that so far. And that's why we've seen already three cases in just about, I want to say three, a few months. So it's been a surprisingly kind of a short rise so far for these cases. And it does make sense as well. Every skin is set on preset on rarity. So of course, the more rare it is, the more preset value it has. Now that was one of the big things I wanted to talk about because initially it was one of my biggest issues. I had going around Twitter, I've been seeing all these posts from YouTubers. And, and VGO retweeting all these tweets about these ridiculous knives and weapons worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And of course, the latest one that I did see most recently um, out of one of their cases was the infamous M4A4, the, the $20,000 M4A4. And I really wanted to ask these owners, how is it possible to preset a value of an, of an item? Of course, for CSGO, it's determined by the community of uh, uh, months and months and, and weeks and weeks of, of course, uh, demand and supply. And then we have the patterns and of course, them being used in the game of CSGO creates that demand for an item. And that's why it has a stability of that price backing. So I really wanted to know how you guys can actually promote and pitch these crazy numbers for skins. And I, th I thought it was a bit a bit of foul play actually posting these skins like the M4A4 is $20,000 because then you can easily lure a younger, an aud a younger audience out there to open the case itself as a, as a chance, a small, small chance to open that ridiculously priced skin. And what I found was actually quite shocking. Now I already knew some of this. You can actually quick sell for these amounts on OP skins. So when that, they set that price floor, the item will not sell for less than that. You can actually instant sell for a lot of these prices 
and there is a lot of stability behind that. So if you open a $20,000 M4, you can insta sell for a very, very high margin on that. And on top of that, if you actually choose to sell it uh, via OP skins and actually wait to sell it, you can probably sell it for more than that amount. So these amounts they're given, they can actually be sold instantly for that amount of money, which is actually pretty crazy. So they're not just setting crazy price floors and not paying out the, the money itself, or they're setting crazy price floors and someone actually has to come up and pay that. Those price floors are the minimum. And if you instant sell, you get that actual value for the item, which is pretty cool. But also I wanted to see what the actual case odds itself. This is a VGO, uh, kind of a newer platform, obviously that runs much, much differently from CSGO. And I've never really wanted to advise you guys. We've talked about this in the past to never open CSGO cases. They are probably the worst odds in any crate opening game out there right now. And that's why uh, I think mostly we've seen YouTubers pretty much die off by opening these cases. Unless you're a huge YouTuber, you're not opening cases because you can't make money and you're just not going to get any views doing it. But the VGO system works very, very differently. And it was really cool to see the case odds, which they do post themselves. It's all public information to actually see the case odds. When you open a case, uh, what you're most likely to get and every skin inside that has a percentage, which is very, very nice. They make it public, very easily accessible. In fact, you can actually view it right there on the screen as of course we have Valve who kind of keeps those numbers hidden. And after years and years of research, we had people like McSkillet and other, other people out there make documents, which we've given us the actual case rates for CSGO. But you know, you know, of course, Valve's never actually publicly posted those rates, despite talk in the past about governments making them post those rates. They have yet to do so. So it is nice to see transparency from VGO and actually posting the rates on their website. If those rates are the true rates, I'm not sure how that can be proven. Uh, something I'll reach out to the owners more about, but let's get into the actual case odds of the VGO case one, two, and three, and what these case odds are actually like, and do you actually have a chance to make money? So for instance, in case one, there's actually 25 knives. Each of them actually had a 0.0039% chance to open for a grand total of 0.0975% chance to open a knife in case one, VGO case one, which is drastically low on terms of statistics. And I've actually seen this through several CS uh, VGO YouTubers out there saying that case one is pretty rigged in of odds and this actually is less than half the odds to open a knife in a CSGO case. So uh, if you're going to spend the 250 to actually open VGO case one, your odds are not looking too good. But case, case two actually improves quite a bit. There are 25 knives in case two at a 0.0013% chance for a total of 0.0325% chance, which are actually better odds than CSGO cases. So drastic difference from VGO case one to VGO case two. And of course, in VGO case two, if you add the 0.0002% chance um, at that uh, at the op, another golden skin of theirs, the op, you of course have a 0.0327% chance of opening a rare item like that. And again, those are still better better odds than CSGO cases. So as of right now, I'd probably just avoid VGO case one and the odds have been played with and manipulated and they do seem to be at least somewhat fair to what we consider to be a market standard if our market standard is CSGO cases. And finally, the third case, one of the cases that actually has several knives in it, but also some rifles in their covert positions. So the most expensive skins in the case, I was very surprised. So far throughout all the cases, this one is definitely the best one. In terms of percentages to actually come away with something worthwhile, it's actually just over half a percent chance, which is incredible odds. I'm not going to lie. Uh, looking over VGO case three compared to CSGO cases, these odds are quite incredible, over double the odds of a CSGO standard case. So again, if we're comparing it to market standard, these cases besides VGO case one do seem legitimately fair. And now that we can actually see the odds of opening these skins, you really can't blame VGO for that. More so, you can you can actually just see the corruptness of this industry in general of how many cases you have to open uh, to actually un unbox something worth it and how rigged the most of these systems generally are. Of course, this is kind of gambling, just like opening CSGO cases is. And so going into it, you have to fully expect there's definitely a chance for you to lose money. But I do also want to say, in this case, you're more likely to lose money doing CSGO cases than VGO, and it's not even close. The odds here are much better, much more favorable. And if you guys do look, as well as also public information out there, VGO runs an entirely different system in terms of percentages for their cases. You're actually much more likely to lose a small amount of money on using VGO cases than you are to lose a large amount of money opening CSGO CSGO cases, which is kind of hard to explain, but I think you guys maybe understand that CSGO cases are really hyped up on the pra on, on a lot of rare items out there that you'll never even have a chance to get. And again, when you open a lot of dead skins on CSGO cases, you'll have a lot of mil specs out there that are worth three to 25 cents. On VGO though, a lot of their items are actually worth a substantial amount and you're much less likely to actually unbox an item worth so such a low amount of money. So over time with VGO, you're more likely to probably break even or lose a little bit of money. Over time with CSGO, you're most likely going to go bankrupt. So it's not even close. So when comparing these two market systems, I do have to say VGO is actually better. But I will say one thing, I don't like the marketing tactic of promoting these kind of skins the way they have. The $10,000 off, the $20,000 M4, I don't like that strategy. It does seem a bit sketchy to kind of promote that kind of thing. Although yes, the players can go to the website, understand how rare an item like that is. It is kind of just a weird promotion tactic. We never saw Valve, or we never saw, um, of course, CSGO 
the CSGO dev on Twitter promote these kind of things and say, unbox number one stat track uh, ruby, uh, you know, sapphire right now, and you can unbox this case right now. They never promoted like that because the product sold itself. So it's just kind of a weird thing seeing, especially being a CSGO fan. It's, it's a weird th seeing this kind of thing promoted so heavily. But also, another thing I want to talk about, a, a big controversy out there, is people 18 and under using this as, as a source of gambling themselves. Now, I've been talking to owners, and uh, it does seem to be a pretty fair system, although any person under 18 can easily bypass any system that restricts them. We saw this throughout CSGO gambling, and I know this video is turning into me like just promoting VGO pretty much, but when you actually look into the great details so far of the platform, there's not too many holes in this ship, and I really welcome you guys to comment down below. I would love to make a part three if you guys want to have me ask other questions. If you guys have any questions for these owners, please comment them down below. I need to know your opinion, but as of right now, the platform itself looks looks pretty good. Uh, of course, we have OP skins. Clearly, in their TOS says you have to be 18 years or older to use uh, VGO and this kind of thing as well, coincidingly. Of course, though, if you have VPNs, you have all this other stuff, you, you can get past it pretty fast. Although I was made aware that OP skins has an entire whitelist, an entire block list for people who are under the age of 18. Now, I couldn't get that list because that's personal information, but there, it is out there. And yes, OP skins will ban people. They will block you if you're not 18 years or older. And if they do whitelist you, you actually have to provide your ID. If you can't do that or any identification proving you're 18 years or older, you are whitelisted or actually blocked from the website permanently. So I don't think it's very, very worth it for people under the age of 18 to go ahead and try this. If you do though, the one thing that's actually a hole in the, in the ship right now, if people are doing VGO giveaways, that kind of stuff, yes, you can be under 18 and actually achieve those skins, but it would take a kid under the age of 18 fully being aware that he is gambling and fully committing himself to actually going through that procedure to actually use VGO. And I know we've seen so many, uh, I guess you could say VGO army people on Twitter who seem to be under the age of 18, but I do think most of them are probably over the age and know exactly how old they have to be to gamble. But again, if you guys want to comment down below about that so I can ask more questions, feel free to. But if there is one small hole, one small problem I saw with this, I think so far I've been pretty open to, with all of you guys being honest. I do trust the platform. They're backed by OP skins. I like the rarities of the skins so far. I do not like how they market these skins, um, but I do like and really enjoy the fact that they have preset rarities and prices, and you can easily see how rare opening a skin really is, as well as their tactic compared to CSGO. When you open VGO skins, you are much more likely to actually make a profit or retain your money than you are opening CSGO skins. So when comparing it to CSGO, it's fine. It's still gambling. It's no longer tied to the game, um, but I do think so far it's had a lot of benefits for me actually looking into this and being given the information. Although a lot of what they do is what we see is kind of scummy and sketchy and it still is gambling. Um, I, I haven't had too many flaws so far with the system, but I do want to talk about as well the biggest hole in the ship I saw was the promotion of these skins. Now we had a big problem because of course VGO skins, you can't use them in game. You can't really wield them. There's really There should be no demand for them other than being used as a gambling currency, which is not true. They have big games coming soon and I would, I would love to make fun of these games. You know, one of them was actually Forge Online. Um, I, 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 actually, I can make fun of it. It looked pretty it looked pretty crappy. And on top of that, a lot of these games, so pretty much how VGO is gonna work, is they're gonna get connected with other games out there and have these games cross-compatible with their skins, which in, in idea, in theory, is an amazing thing. You know, you can have these skins, let's say you guys can all keep your CSGO inventories and play with them for every Counter-Strike game ever in the future and ever in the past. That's cross compatible. That's that's freaking awesome. I wish we had that for CS:GO skins, and I wish Valve would do that for all Valve games in the future. That'd be amazing. It'd also be very hard to implement, but they could definitely do it. And VGO is trying to do that somewhat. Now, when I say somewhat, they're actually reaching out to game providers. Forge Online, which is the first of it, I kind of had a problem because you can actually play these betas for free, but you do have to purchase the game as well to use those skins in the game. So once you purchase your VGO skins, you keep them forever, they're in your inventory, but a lot of these games so far they're working with are not going to be free games. So you have your VGO skins, but you also probably have to pay to play the game with your VGO skins, if that does make sense. So one thing people found out is Forge Online was a big promotion, it's the first VGO compatible game. Unfortunately enough, the beta was free uh, to download, but then once you actually wanted to play the real game, it was 25 bucks. So of course that does piss some people off, and I'm sure maybe in the future they will actually coincide with some free games out there. So that's one major backfire, but at the same time, it's still a very cool system to actually implement or try to, that VGO is trying to give these these skins some actual in-game value, and if they do succeed in doing this, at least for one big game in the future, it could mean big things for VGO. Now, I hope you guys all enjoyed my opinion about this. Overall, I've had a few problems, but definitely more positives than negatives about VGO. Uh, huge shouts to Joe as well and the owners out there who reached out to me to give me information. I hope I gave you guys both sides of the coin, and feel free to actually comment down below what problems you have with the video or any questions in the future. I would love 
love to do a VGO part three uh, if you guys want me to, and that will be the last of it. That's the last time I actually cover it. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you all hopefully tomorrow or sometime soon with some more CSGO news. My name is Jake. Goodbye.